Right, you just hang on, old chap. I'll get some help. Just appeared out of nowhere. No wallet, no identification. Did he see what happened? Not a word. Can you tell me your name, me? Smart bear. Has it got a name? No, we, we don't need no help from no one, okay? I'm the district nurse. My surgery's just here. I could clean those cuts up for you. And I've got lemonade. The lemonade might have swung it, eh? Come on. Michael Todd. Is that your name? Mickey. I'm Sergeant Miller. I've done nothing wrong. Nobody's suggesting you have. So why are you hassling me, man? You've clearly been the victim of a very serious assault. We'd like to know who did it. Yeah, I'll bet. Well, come on, Mickey. Why not tell us what happened? <laughs> Bang on the head. Can't remember. Oh, not the rotten radiator again. Oh, I don't know. Just went in the post office, bought ten bob and me account, and I got all the flipping, they wouldn't start. You probably flooded the garburetta. Oh, thanks, Mr. Owen. Well, I've got to pick Mrs. Perkins up off the five o'clock train. What am I going to do? Well... How's that feel? So... Why are you doing this? Helping us. Well, it's my job. Most people think we're just scum. I'm not most people. When's the baby due? How do you know? <laughs> Exercise and breathing for mums to be. That's what I also do every Thursday. You try. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. Have you had an antenatal check? Yeah. Yeah, we were camping up near York and I, I went to a hospital there. They said everything's fine. Are you going to be here long? You could come to one of my classes? I'm not sure. We've got a nice place in Woods. We should be getting back. Just over here. Oh, be a trouble with taxi. Oh, I didn't want to let you down. I'm not getting into a hearse. Oh, it'll be fine. It'll, I'll, I'll give you a hand. Are you looking for a taxi, love? Cos, um, well, that don't look like a very nice way to travel. Oh, thank goodness. How 
you can. What, use a hearse as a taxi? No, lad, you can't. You see, punters don't take to it, in my experience. <laughs> I can take you right to the camp. This thing goes anywhere. It has to. No. We'll be OK. I couldn't help noticing the bruises. Are you sure you want to go back? For now, I've got to. You are thinking of leaving, then? You can trust me, you know. Maybe I could help. Oh, that lemonade? You never told the nice lady your name. <laughs> He's just shy. He's Niall, and I'm Kim. This is Jingly. Hello, Jingly. Well, you look after him and your mum. You know where to find me. <laughs> Sounds like you've got our man. Mickey Todd. Could well be. He's got a record. Three convictions for possession and sale of cannabis. His attitude's pretty hostile, too. The dealer we picked up in Whitby was selling high-grade black Moroccan resin. Strong stuff. we certainly like to know where it's come from. It's possible he could be involved. I'm Detective Sergeant Dawson, Mr Todd. I've told him and I'll tell you. I've got nothing to say. And what interests me is why, Mr Todd? You've got a record for supplying cannabis. Here we go. And you certainly upset someone. What happened? It was a private matter. You told me you couldn't remember. Are we talking private, as in you sold black Moroccan to some local dealers and upset their usual suppliers? I've no idea what you're talking about. Haven't you? Well, it looks like you'll have some time in here to reflect. We'll be back, Mr Todd. Yeah, can't wait. Now can I get some kip? I doubt he's on his own. He'll have some mates somewhere. Let's find them. Anyway, I was trying to get her into the, the hearse, and then this woman, right old battle like, she dr draws up bold as brass, offers her a taxi. <laughs> you can't expect your customers to ride in a hearse, David. Well, I didn't want to let her down. This woman with a taxi, what does she look like? The cuts to her face were recent, but she had quite a lot of old bruising as well. And when I dropped them back, she was clearly frightened. So you actually went to this traveller's camp? No, she wouldn't let me. But you have an idea of what it is? If you could just go out there, Joe. I know domestic abuse is a minefield, but she's pregnant. And if he saw that people were concerned about her, he might just think twice. OK, if you point me in the right direction. Thanks. I dropped them by the logging road at the top end of the Ashfordley estate, so it must be near there. Here you go. Oh, what was it? Rotor arm's been removed. What, deliberately? Well, it's not the sort of thing that just drops off. Ma Barker. It's got to be. I didn't know she'd gone into the taxi business, though. Ma Barker? Yeah. Me and her have had some run-ins over the years. Mind you, I thought she'd retired to Bridlington after her eldest went down for GBH. <laughs> Nice bike. Yesterday we found a man who was badly beaten up. We think he may have been one of your group, Mickey Todd. Is he OK? He's in the local hospital. Do any of you know what happened to him? Yeah. He argued with a man. It's never a good idea. Which man was that? A gamekeeper. Came in here, says we're trespassing, waves his gun about. Then what happened? He rings, he wants 20 quid to go away. Mick says no. Gamekeeper gives him a right pasting. You saw this? Tried to stop it, but hard to argue with a gun. Mickey ran off into the woods, never saw him again. Are you sure about all this? Look, we're travellers. All we want is to be free and live off the land. But there's always someone wants to rip us off. Are you really going to ride that fine bike up to the big house and nick Lord Muck's gamekeeper? I don't think so. If you're telling me the truth, I will.
long has Mr. Kelly been with you, my lord? Six months or so. Good gamekeepers are hard to come by. Kelly! I didn't say you come in. Apparently not. Constable Mason would like to ask you some questions about a band of travelling hippies. It seems they're camping in the woods at the top end of the estate. I think he's mistaken. Or a bear one. Until the dad had rooted him out. God, man, you smell like a distillery. Yesterday was my birthday. As a rule, I never touch stuff. A serious accusation has been made, Mr Kelly. Are you sure you've never visited these travellers? What sort of accusation? They say the gamekeeper tried to extort £20 out of them to keep quiet about them camping there. Is this true, Kelly? They're all liars and thieves, my lord. They'll say out. More seriously, after refusing to pay up, they say a member of their group was badly beaten. He's an Ashfordly general. I'm sure I've made it clear that I don't condone the use of violence by my employees in any shape or form. I think you'd better accompany me to the station, Mr Kelly, so we can sort this out. It's a pack of lies. I've not so hard. <laughs> So let's start again, shall we? Were you at the camp in the woods late yesterday morning? Hang over, eh? Every time you do it, you say to yourself, never again. Do you find that? Let's stick to the point, shall we? Well, that is the point, Sergeant. It was my birthday yesterday. And to tell you the truth, I went on a bit of a bender. I spent most of the day at Aidan's Field Arms. Ask Oscar Blayton. He'll tell you. Come on, get the body to open. What do you think it is? I'd say kippers. Kippers? It's an old trick. Someone's put a kipper on your exhaust manifold. And he's been sizzling away nicely. What to do that? Well, somebody who wants to put you out of business, not sir. Probably the same somebody as Nick your rotor arm. Mark Barker. Hey, our Peggy must be right. Looks that way. I've just talked to Oscar Blaketon. He confirms you're at the pub from opening time till he closed at three and put you falling down drunk into a taxi. So you're in the clear. Thanks for brute. Show Mr. Kelly out, Mason. Word to the wise, Constable. These hippies, just a bunch of vagabonds. In future, I'd take what they say with a pinch of salt. He knew they were there, all right. He may have an alibi for the beating, but he's still lying. I'm inclined to agree with you. But what interests me is why the hippies are lying. To put us off the scent. Takes us back to the drugs. Ah, Weatherby. Sarge. Care to tell me where you've been for the last couple of days? Uh, nowhere, Sarge. Nowhere? Well, I've been out and about. Following up traffic offences. Traffic offences? What traffic offences? A warrant to search the camp. Shall we? Right then. I want a report of your movements for the last couple of days on my desk, first thing in the morning. Understood. Hey, what's it? Was that you lot with those kippers? Beg your pardon? I don't know what you're up to. You're trying to put me out of business. I know you've gone parked in my parking space. Your space? It's got your name written on it, is it? Why well, always park here? Says who? Uh, says me. It's a public spot. I tell you what, when we're not here, you can have your spot back. How's that sound? Yeah, that's fair enough. Well, that's a deal then. 
I'll just do Kim? This way. I'm Detective Sergeant Dawson, and I've a warrant to search these vehicles and this camp. Help yourself, love, but don't, you know, too much. Frightens the kids. Let's get on with it. Now I want to know why you lied to PC Mason, Mr. Talbot. can I tell you? I thought it was a gamekeeper. Must have been some other bloke. Giving false evidence is a serious offence. Can you describe him? Just some bloke with a gun. We will get to the bottom of this. I hope you do. Justice for Mickey. We want that. Nothing, Sarge. We've got no drugs here, Sergeant. If you'd asked me, I could have told you. Save you some hassle. Glad to see you're on the case, Miller. These people are trespassing. I want them moved on. No, we, uh, we came to uh, some sort of arrangement. That he should have your spot? No. David, this is Ma Barker. She'll not stop till she's put you out of business. Well, what else am I meant to do? You've got to fight back, David. No, he can't manage the Barkers on his own. I'll go and see her for you. Oh, come on, Peggy. He doesn't want his auntie fighting his battles for him. Besides, he's a fully grown man. You've got to stand up for yourself, David. You know, Dawn's right. I'm going to sort this out on my own. Perhaps what Josh Towler said was true, that he was extorting money from them. No, accusing the gamekeeper was just a convenient lie. Finding out who beat up Mickey and why, that's the key to this. Potato? You have to play them at the wrong game, David. Where to, love? Vicarage, please. to some of the nurses at the hospital. Why didn't you tell me about Kim's boyfriend? Kim's boyfriend? Mickey Todd. 
You and Dias Dawson have been questioning him. It's an ongoing inquiry. Don't fob me off, Joe. You used me. That's why he was so interested in where the hippies' camp is. You've got no concern for Kim whatsoever. A lot of high-grade cannabis resin has turned up in the district. We think the hippies might somehow be involved. Kim's been beaten up by a boyfriend. That's a crime too, surely. If she's prepared to give evidence. Are you just assuming she won't? Oh, come on, Carol, don't be naive. These people see themselves as outsiders, rebels. We're the enemy. She's not about to shop her boyfriend to the police no matter how much he thumps her. So that's that. Pregnant woman, you're not even prepared to look into it. You can't rescue every waif and stray that crosses your path. Is that what you think I do? Sometimes you get too close. <sighs> well, maybe you don't get close enough. You just think like a policeman. Maybe that's because I am a policeman. Here you go. Oh, Don. You look like you've lost a shilling and found sixpence. Uh, it's a long day, that's all. Fancy a refill? Goy. I get some service over here. Aye, all right. Hold your horses. When are you going to go out with me then? Frank, you're drunk. Right, uh, give your mummy a kiss good night. Oh, good night, my sweetheart. I reckon you can do with a bit of fun. No, no, I just want a girl like you. She's not interested. You got it? What's it to you? Oh. Hey, stop, stop. hey! Hey, stop it! Just leave it! All right, that's it. Not about you fighting in my pub with her, but you're a copper, not a thug. What the hell? What's got your go? Sorry. Look, Kiss. Don! Nothing. I'm sorry. Good night. When did you last see Frank Kelly alive, my lord? Yesterday afternoon, but I did hear a taxi pull up shortly after 11 last night. I presume that was him. He was in the Edensfield Arms till closing. Could you assemble all your staff so we can talk to them? Yes, of course. I want a fingertip search of the whole area. Kelly had dealings with the hippies. That's your theory, isn't it, Mason? He may have an alibi for Mickey Todd's beating, but there's still a connection. Todd's absconded from hospital. I think that puts him top of our list. I'll put out a general call. It might be worth a visit to the camp. They could still be there. Right. You come with me, Mason. I want a word with you. Back at the station. We haven't missed them by much. Maybe your theory was right. Kelly was extorting money out of them and... Mickey decided to put an end to it. He'd cut a man's throat for 20 quid. What well, happens? Hang on, Sarge. This log's been moved. Something's been hidden here. Drugs. He went mad. He hit Niall. He's never touched the boy before. It might be broken. He's gone too far this time. I'm taking his hospital. No. No. Can you do something? I'll come with you. It'll be all right, I promise. Come on. Just one moment. Bang! <laughs> I thought you should have seen his face. I hope you're not getting him into trouble. No, no, no. She's a good lass. I'm leaving you in capable hands, David. 
Goodbye. Sure. Well, well, well. Peggy Armstrong. <laughs> I might have known you were behind this. What's up, Dolly? Have you been having engine problems on them clapped-out old taxis of yours? Maybe I should shove this up your exhaust pipe. Hey, come on, ladies, I don't want any trouble. Oh, it must be a long time since anybody's accused you of being a lady. I'm warning you, Peggy. I'm running a legitimate business. That's a first. You may be running a legitimate business, but the fact is you're still muscling in on David's territory. Free market competition, love. There isn't the business for two taxi firms in Aidensfield. Then one of us will go to war. All oh, right, is that what you think? Then why don't we have a contest to decide who's best then, eh? Depends what you got in mind. What about the egg run, eh, Gina? You take it in turns to drive to Mitchell's farm. You get two trays of eggs and drive them back. If a single egg is broken, you lose. But if all eggs come back intact, it's the fastest time that wins. And I don't want any funny business. Oh. Right, you're going first, David. Are you ready? OK, everyone, stand back, please. for six months? Thereabouts. I was beginning to have my doubts about the fellow, but I never imagined anyone would murder him. Sarge. What did you know about his background, my lord? Well, his references were sound, but I can tell you one thing. I did not know he was a drunkard. He kept that well hidden. I think there's something under these floorboards, Sarge. Rip him up. No, oh, be my guest. Anything? What on earth is it? Cannabis resin, my lord. Probably a variety known as Black Moroccan. You wait here. I'll be back in a minute. I just need to make a quick call to a friend of mine, OK? It's not what you think, Sarge. It's not what I think that matters. Oscar Blaketon told me what happened between you and Kelly in the pub last night. I didn't kill him. If CID find themselves short of leads, you might have some very serious explaining to do. It was stupid, I know. What have you got against Frank Kelly, anyway? What's up with you, lad? Where's that report I asked you for? Your mind's clearly not been on the job. Sorry, sir. If you've got some kind of problem, i best know about it. There's no problem. Right, then. Let's see you pull your socks up. Joe, you're blocking the boy's wrist now. You're going to have to arrest him. I didn't expect you to come in force. Things have moved on, Carol. Where are they? Uh, with the doctor. Look, what's going on? A man was found murdered this morning. His throat was slashed. Mickey Todd and his friends are our prime suspects. Oh, my God. We need Kim to help us find Mickey. Yeah, of course. Is that then? Look, just let me talk to them first. Mason. What the hell do you think you're playing at? It's all right. We're not here to arrest you. We just want to talk. I thought you liked us. I didn't think you'd chop us to the police. Satisfied. Well, I told you once and I told you I've come to apologize. Yeah, well, uh, bad business all round. They found a lot of drugs at Kelly's place. Drugs? That's probably why he was killed. Well, I never much liked the man, but that does surprise me. Well, I've said my piece. Fair enough. Is that all you're going to say? Yeah. Dawn! What is wrong with you? You're like a bear with a sore head. Nothing. Don't give me that. Look, you'd do better to talk about it. Or you'll end up in another fight. It 
It's Sunday. She's having an affair. Are you sure? Yeah. I've been following her. Following my own wife. Oh, Don, I'm sorry. I thought the move to Ashford would help. I thought we were all right, you know? Have you spoke to her? And say what? I love her, Gina. I'm sure she still loves you. You just need to talk. No. It's over. Everything OK? Yeah. Oh, call me a little fella. A little pudding. Oh. OK. Kim, we need to know where Mickey is, where the others have gone. Can you tell us that? Come on, Kim. Mickey beat you. He broke your son's wrist. Why are you still covering for him? Oh, this is no good. There's a police car. I think Mr Jingley likes it. She won't talk to us at all. Are you surprised? Look, I accept my approach to the hospital might have been a bit direct, but this young woman could have vital information about a killer, and we need to find him. Will you help us? I doubt she trusts me any more than you now. But I'll do what I can. Alf. Do it on Alf. Let's go and find a biscuit, shall we? Thank you, David. Yep. Let me have a look at them. You see, they don't much look like real. <gasps> Is Harold ready then, or...? <laughs> Harold. Thank you. <laughs> 20 minutes. He'll be back in 10. The route was OK then, David. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've done that a hundred times. <laughs> and you, you didn't take the shortcut? What shortcut? The left hand fork down the cart track. Are we uh, ready or what? Yes, yeah, soon as Harold's behind the wheel. Left hand fork down the cart track. You ready? Set. Go! What happened at the hospital was unfortunate. But remember what you said. This time it's hurt Niall, and you're not going to stand for that. That was between us. I only told you because I trusted you. Kim, you have to tell us where Mickey is. I know it's hard. But you've got a child to think of and another on the way. I told you before, it wasn't Mickey. You don't have to be scared of him anymore. What's been going on, Kim? What, there was a row about drugs? Mickey went after Kelly. Killed Kelly. It wasn't Mickey, OK? He wouldn't kill anyone. He wouldn't hurt a fly. But he hurt you and Niall. I never said that. Who broke your son's wrist? <laughs> it was his father. It was Josh. I thought you were with Mickey. I love Mickey. I'm having his baby. Let's get this clear. Josh Towler is your boyfriend. He's my husband. I married him when I was 17. When I had Niall. But you've been having an affair with Mickey. You don't know what Josh is like. <laughs> He's a complete nutter. <laughs> when he found out about me and Mickey, he went after him with a tire iron. Beat him up. Told him never to come back. And then he gave me a hiding. Told me I'd never see Mickey again. <laughs> Mickey and I planned to run away together. Where's Josh now? I don't know. I swear. I tell you if I did. Great word. <laughs> We've had a sighting of Josh Tower and his group. They're in a lay by near the crossroads at Wade's Beck. Right. He's to be approached with caution. We'll need backup.
see. I told you Jingley would take care of it for us. We're going to shoot off. What about your tea? No, we'd better get back on the road. Thanks for everything. So what happened, Josh? You supplied Kelly with cannabis, but you wouldn't pay up, so you killed him. You know, I could really do with a smoke. Don't fancy rolling me one, do you, love? Put him in a cell. Police station. Somewhere hard to find. Only what you always were, it's true. I'm looking for. in the interview room. She can wait in here with the boy. Oh. Uh, sit down here, love. I'll go and get you a cup of tea. You've got a choice, Mickey. You can tell us the truth. Or you can go to prison for life for the gamekeeper's murder. Him and Josh fell out, that's all I know. Fell out over some drugs. So tell us how it all worked. It's your only way. Yeah, I know. All right, I'll tell you. But leave Kim out of this, eh? She's done nothing. There you are, love. Thank <laughs> you. 
you on fair and square. Well, does that mean you're going to leave Aidensfield to me, then? I've got a better idea. You could join us. I'm in need of a good driver. There'll be a nice new sleek cab, regular wages, and additional fringe benefits. Like two weeks' holiday a year in Markham. Put him back in the cells. And keep the handcuffs on him. You all right, Al? Uh, what about you, Sarge? I'm a survivor, so. Well, he's a dangerous man, but I'm not sure he'll ever confess to Kelly's murder. After he'd done it, he came back and he chucked the knife in his toolbox. Had blood on it. It's probably still there. Gina, I'd like to buy you a drink. Oh, a fall? Well, you're a police widow, and I'm supposed to be looking after your welfare. You've ended up looking after me. Dawn, you're a mate. You know where I am if you ever need to talk. Get that man a paint, Gina. And I'm buying. What are you drinking? I'm fine, thanks. We're all grateful for what you've done, Carol. Really? What happened to Kim? Well, she's got no previous convictions, so probation. Better than having a baby in prison. But Mickey will go down. For drug dealing? Yeah, I think so. Well, I must congratulate Don properly. She thinks I'm a fool for protecting Kim, doesn't she? Oh, you think that we are hard-hearted police officers? You bullied Kim. And you used me. I'm sorry that you see it that way. Yeah. So am I, Joe. David Stockwell. What's this I hear? You won the race, but you're going to work for Ma Barker. Well, if you can't even be bothered to turn can't up for it. Be bothered, David. I had a very important business appointment. <laughs> The bookies annual bash at York Races, wasn't it, Peg? Yes, it was. And I always go in memory of my dear Herbert. And David knows that, don't you? Look, she's offered me a holiday in Morecambe. Morecambe? Well, it always rains in August, but it's up to you. What? Well, right, what have you got to offer me instead, then? Steak and ale pie. Well. Custard tart for afters. Oh, who wants to be bossed around by her anyway? Are you ready for home then? Oh, yeah. I'm starving. I bet you're a lovely dad. Somewhere out there is a grown woman. My child. Child I never knew I had. <laughs> My money's gone. And one of you lot must have swiped it. Under the circumstances, I have no option at present but to suspend you from duty with immediate effect.